So uh, the ADS, we actually call it the ADS work group. It stands for Automated Decision Making Systems. And it uh, was created by our legislature after um, a bill was introduced to regulate artificial intelligence and algorithms in the state of Washington. So the bill did not uh, pass through the legislature, but the uh, ideas behind regulating AI and thinking about uh, its impacts on public, on the public and citizens in Washington uh, carried through. And so uh, the legislature created in the budget a proviso that provided for the creation of the ADS workgroup, which stands for Automated Decision-Making Systems, but also we looked at artificial intelligence. Thank you, Kathy. This is a very timely and innovative initiative from the Washington State Government, and I would like to take a deep dive into some aspects of the group's work. For, ex for example, uh, why did the state decided to create this workgroup? So they created the work group because of the wide use of ADS systems and also the new trends of starting to use AI in government. And so the legislature was interested to have a work group of um, professionals in this area to come together and discuss potential recommendations that the state could consider in terms of regulating AI. Uh, the group was a wide variety of uh, individuals, including uh, members from the advocacy community, which included the American Civil Liberties Union, and then also representatives from several state agencies. Uh, so it was a very diverse group of uh, subject matter experts that came together to discuss the issues. Thank you. And what are the benefits of incorporating artificial intelligence in the decision-making process of public agencies? So some of the benefits that we're thinking about and looking for in using AI and ADS are efficiencies and cost savings and uh, the potential to reduce uh, biases and inaccuracies and also improving the delivery of public services. Uh, AI may also offer uh, the opportunity for more consistency as long as uh, you're training the AI with appropriate data sets. I was in, in mute. And what do you consider to be the most critical challenges that the ADP workgroup has faced so far? So, uh, it was interesting. We were only required to meet four times, but we met 10 times uh, because we had a lot of very robust uh, conversations with the diverse opinions about impacts of AI. And uh, some of our most challenging conversations were really around um, what is AI and what is ADS? Uh, we never actually agreed on a scope uh, on a definition of ADS uh, because there's a tension between um, what type of sim systems should be regulated and which ones should um, not be, like we shouldn't be concerned about in terms of low risk of impact. So that was one of the biggest challenges and we never resolved uh, the definition but uh, we did come up with a somewhat of a compromise. And one of our recommendations, uh, because the concerns are about, as you know, limited government resources uh, to prioritize the systems and provide for a framework to make sure that the uh, systems that have the most impact on individuals' rights and freedoms are the ones put at the top of the list in terms of uh, review and assessment. It is very interesting to hear about the behind the scenes conversation among the working group members and this is a big challenge in emerging fields such, such as artificial intelligence and this is a question that is very important for us based on your experience. What role can the private sector play in this process? 
So I think the private sector has already been well ahead of the curve, uh, fortunately, in uh, having awareness in terms of AI bias potentials and impacts that can harm individuals. And so the private sector has been having this conversation for several years, and in some ways the government's just now catching up to that. But I think it will be important for the private sector to um, have a voice in terms of uh, what regulations can be put in place to help make sure that the private sector is being held accountable for creating systems that do not have bias or uh, inaccuracies. Absolutely, and going back to your previous comments, are the main impacts that you foresee on individual rights and freedoms? So that is uh, where the most high risk is in terms of AI and ADS. But of course, there's many examples where uh, we would want to be using uh, ADS and AI uh, to help make uh, very routine uh, decisions or where it's very transparent in terms of the information being used to make the decisions. So we don't want to uh, impede the use and innovation and all of the benefits that can come from using AI to help improve, as I said, delivery of public services. But uh, the systems that we need to have be the most concerned about are the ones that do impact uh, have the biggest impact on individuals' uh, rights and freedoms and potentially benefits, uh, housing, employment, those types of uh, areas. We want to make sure that there is a fair, transparent, and accountable AI use. 